Enoch and the Archangel Michael once had a remarkable encounter in the ninth heaven. They went together till they reached a place called Erevoth. Something extraordinary happened. Archangel Michael led Enoch to a breathtaking sight, the Lord's face. It was like looking at iron glowing fiercely in a raging fire, shooting sparks and shining brightly. Enoch was astounded when he saw this amazing vision. But here's the thing, the Lord's face was breathtaking, beautiful, and terrifying beyond words. Enoch recognized that certain things are simply too beautiful, wonderful, and horrible to put into words. And this was one of them. Who could clarify the Lord's inexplicable nature and strange, beyond words appearance? His commands are infinite, his voice is powerful, and his throne is majestic, far exceeding anything made by human hands. Cherubim and seraphim, or angel choirs, surround him and fill the air with their ceaseless singing. Humans cannot comprehend his gorgeous, unchanging beauty in vast grandeur. Enoch became overwhelmed and fell to the ground to worship the Lord. But then something fantastic happened. The Lord addressed him immediately, comforting him and encouraged him to approach him confidently for all eternity. He was raised up and brought before the Lord's face, accompanied by Michael, the Lord's commander. Surprisingly, the Lord then told his servants to keep him standing before him at all times. His glorious ones respectfully obeyed and verified his command. The Lord then instructed Michael, retrieve Enoch from his earthly garments. Anoint him with my sacred oil and cover him with glory. Michael followed the Lord's instructions. He anointed Enoch with celestial oil and adorned him in exquisite clothing. The oil light was brilliant than any light known to man, with a perfume of sweet dew and myrrh and a luminosity comparable to the sun's glittering beams. When he looked at himself, he saw he had been transformed into one of the Lord's wonderful beings, with no obvious difference between them. The Lord then called one of his archangels, Vervoil, who was known for his exceptional intelligence and was in charge of documenting all of the Lord's actions. The Lord told Vervoil, Retrieve the books from my apartments and get a fast writing pen. Give it to Enoch and read the book's contents to him. Vervoil swiftly performed the Lord's command, bringing out the books and a pen designed for quick writing. He placed them in front of him, assuring that he was ready to absorb the divine truth contained within. The Angel of Peace explained the mysteries of the heavens, earth, and sea to Enoch. He revealed the secrets of the elements, including their movements and nature's thundering sounds. He learned about the sun, moon, and stars, including their orbits, phases, and celestial dances. He told me about the changing seasons, the counting of years, days, and hours, and the appearance of clouds borne by the wind. Enoch was amazed as he spoke of the many angels and their exquisite singing, as well as the diversity of human experiences, languages, and melodies. He taught him all he needed to know about life, from guiding principles to the joy of music. Vervoil spent a month constantly imparting his expertise to Enoch, his words flowing non-stop. Without pause, Enoch methodically chronicled each symbol and creature he described. Following this difficult period, Vervoil entrusted Enoch a great responsibility. He instructed him to record everything he had learned in writings that would stay forever, revealing the fates of souls still unborn as well as the sites where they would be waiting beyond time. Enoch set out on another 30-day journey, meticulously chronicling every detail. In the end, he had authored a total of 366 books, each containing the profound knowledge revealed to me throughout those enlightening days and nights. The Lord summoned Enoch and commanded him to sit beside him, along with Gabriel. He bowed in reverence before the Lord and acknowledged his presence. The Lord then addressed him directly, saying, Enoch, Beloved. He revealed that everything he observed, whether static or moving, was created to perfection by his hand. He promised to personally teach the mysteries of creation to him, bringing him toward understanding. Before anything existed, the Lord said, I brought forth all that is from the void and made the unseen manifest. Listen carefully, Enoch, the Lord continued, because I will reveal things to you that even my angels do not know. I have not revealed to them the depths of my infinity or the inexplicable nature of my being, as I have to you now. 
Before apparent creation, I, the Eternal One, moved over the unseen worlds in the same way as the sun does from east to west and back. Unlike the light, I couldn't find calm within myself because everything was still under construction. He then came up with the concept of laying the groundwork for a visible universe. God explained to Enoch how he ordered the lower realms, saying, let one of the unseen things descend and become visible. Then a doyle descended, appearing tremendously large. As Enoch stared at him, he noticed a bright light emanating from within a doyle's tummy. The Lord instructed a doyle to dissolve himself, enabling what was within him to emerge. A doyle agreed, and a brilliant light exploded from him. In the midst of this blazing brilliance, Enoch observed creation unfold just as God had intended. Enoch was immersed in divine light as he witnessed the dawning of a new era, which revealed the beauty and completeness of God's creation. As he observed, he realized it was quite amazing. Enthroned in the midst of this heavenly insight, I spoke to the light, commanding it to ascend even higher than my throne and solidify, becoming the very foundation for the most lofty creations, and the Lord moved on. Nothing is higher than this light, except the void itself. Enoch bowed reverently before this magnificent sight, gazing up from his throne. God summoned Arkaz from the depths of the invisible regions once more, but this time he became visible. Arkaz appeared robust and massive, with a deep crimson hue. The Lord told Arkaz to open himself up so that what was inside him may be revealed. Arkaz complied and dissolved, ushering in a dark, enormous epoch during which all lower things evolved. Enoch looked at this new species and saw its goodness, acknowledging the divine wisdom in creating such wonders from the deep. God commanded Arkaz to descend and convert into a solid form, becoming the foundation of the lowest regions. And so it was. Arkaz dropped and solidified, laying the groundwork for creation's most basic elements. Under this blackness, there is nothing but nothingness. God decreed the separation of light and darkness, and as a result, water was formed. He thickened it and surrounded it with light, elevating it above the darkness and below the light. Thus, he created the vast body of water known as the bottomless. He erected a tiny foundation along the river. He drew seven big circles in the water that resembled crystal, both wet and dry, like glass or ice. These rings served as routes for water and other materials. He assigned each circle its own course, guiding them with the seven stars in their respective skies to guarantee they walked in harmony with one another. Enoch witnessed the perfection of God's creation and recognized its goodness. Then God parted the waters, separating the light and the darkness. He commanded the light, let there be day, and the darkness, let there be night. Thus, nightfall fell, followed by the dawn of morning, marking the end of the first day of creation. God demonstrated his tremendous wisdom and strength to Enoch throughout a seven-day period. He expertly created all heavenly and terrestrial energy, as well as all living creatures, including mankind. God solidified the heavenly spheres and caused the lower waters to cluster in one spot, causing dry land to emerge from the rocks formed by the waves. So he gave the dry surface planet and the deep depths of the planet the name Bottomless. He gathered the oceans and tied them with a permanent barrier, guaranteeing that they did not exceed their set boundaries. God built the firmament above the oceans to protect the structure of creation. The first day of creation was named after himself. Earth's second day began when darkness fell and daybreak broke. I appreciate your viewing.